whatever I do, I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. Rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. You think you might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next time. You're all rebels, aren't you? Save the rebellion! Save the dream! Okay, hey guys, uh, my name is Mr. McCracken and we're here from the high school. Uh, we're videoing this today so that the information that we're gonna pass along to you about what you're doing here and why you're watching Rogue One and all that stuff can be uh, recorded and put on the website for your parents and stuff when you can tell them about it, they can go and watch this. So the microphones and stuff that we're using today are for the cameras, they're, they're actually gonna put our audio into the cameras so you won't hear us coming through the speakers but hopefully we'll be loud enough so you can hear everything that's going on. Um, but we wanted to, we've been working on this project at the high school for a few years and we kind of changed a little bit about what we're going to be doing with it into a uh, cross-curricular, uh, cross the uh, different um, subjects to teach you a little bit differently when you come into ninth grade. So we wanted to tell you a little bit about it, show you about it first, and then give you the details after we're done. So we have a team of teachers here, some administrators uh, that are going to talk to you about it a little bit and show you. The first part here, we're actually going to show you how the learning and stuff's a little bit different. Um, so we're going to do that first, and then after that's done, we'll talk a little bit more about the details and signing up for it and why you were picked to be here and all that kind of stuff. All right, so this is Mr. Mrs. Stewart from the high school, too. Uh, she's going to tell you a little bit more about what they're going to be doing here in a few minutes. So. Right. We brought um, four teachers with us today, and the four teachers that you're going to see over here are the ones that will actually be running this program at the high school. Um, so the first one here is Mr. Warziniak, and he is the ninth grade English. And then we have Miss Bartko, she is math. Uh, Mr. Moses, who does the civics and government. And then Mr. Babic, who does our biology. We're gonna turn it over to them right now so you can actually see how this is gonna work. Uh, hi, like Mrs. Stewart said, I'm Mr. Warziniak. I, I teach English up at the high school. And you know, one of the reasons why uh, you saw a clip of Rogue One is just to emphasize the idea that one of our goals is to be able to use really anything, obviously something that works pretty well, uh, and, and be able to teach with it across all four uh, classrooms. So for instance, you know, even something as basic as Star Wars, you know, as classic as Star Wars, um, it's just another example of a story, and a, a pretty classic type of story, you know, the, the journey, um, a quest, the, that sort of story that I'm sure a lot of you guys have, have encountered before in reading and movies, you know, whether it's like Hunger Games or uh, Harry Potter, or even The Outsiders. I don't know if you guys have, been, have read The Outsiders yet. Or, uh, you know, I mean, that's kind of like a, a journey, a quest type uh, of situation, coming of age. So it really doesn't matter what we work with. You know, for instance, with even something like Star Wars in English class, uh, we could take a look at um, 
the characters, you know, how are the characters developed? What are, what are the types of clues that we as readers or audiences get uh, to understand those characters the best? Uh, the setting, think of, you know, all the different settings in Star Wars. We're, we'll hear a little bit more about those later, but, you know, why is setting important in, in that story? Uh, and conflict, you know, what, what's the big problem here? Who are the different sides within each conflict? Who are the protagonists and antagonists? How do we know that? Uh, and so there's really, no matter what the text is or what the story is, uh, we should be able to work with it in English class. And uh, the goal is hopefully to also have it carry over to social studies class as well, like Mr. Moses will talk about. Okay, um, I'm Mr. Moses and I teach the civics and government. And the way we can take a look at and how Star Wars fits in, uh, it's, it is a story of government and of rebellion. So if you take a look at the pictures up above here, we see that we have the Empire and their police force, which is the stormtroopers. And then you have the rebel forces. Well, that rebel force used to be the government prior to the Empire taking over. And so we could take a look at and study the Republic and what makes up a Republic. And then how does a republic actually can fall to a totalitarian system under the control of the empire? Uh, and then through that, you make your studies of government and how that relates to modern day, uh, looking at what, why do we have this tie to rebellions? Because when we look at that movie, we see ourselves within the rebels, not within the empire. And that's just because our culture is made up and is developed based upon a rebellion. And we can look at how does a successful rebellion occur. Uh, and then even link that to modern day and see, like look at Syria and what was happening in Syria uh, and during their rebellion uh, that just recently collapsed. Uh, and we can take a look at how those governments interact with each other. Uh, then those characters are coming from different uh, locations and so that will hand over to biology with Mr. Babbitt. Good morning, everybody. Star Wars would probably be a really easy movie for us to take a look at the technology and what kind of things exist and what kind of things could exist in the future. But it also would be a nice piece to look at in biology, and that's what you'll be taking next year. So some of the things that we could look at in biology are the biomes. As we look at these biomes, we see the first one is Tatooine. I've, I, I didn't memorize these names of these planets. But Tatooine is just like the Sahara Desert on Earth. We have Camino, which is an ocean biome similar to the North Atlantic. We have Dagobah, which is a swamp a lot like Louisiana. We have Hoth, which is an ice planet, but would be similar to Antarctica. And then finally, we have Endor, which is a temperate rainforest that's similar to Washington State. So we could take a look at these different biomes, and we could see how are these biomes similar to the ones on Earth? How are they different? Did the movie get it right, or are they wrong? Um, in, in the movie, the whole planet is the same biome, but here on Earth, we have a lot of different biomes all on the same planet. Why is that? And could it be possible to have one biome on one planet? Um, so one of the things that we might also take a look at is how is life adapted to each one of these biomes? And we could then take a look at the different life forms. When we look at the life forms in Star Wars, we can take a look at what's similar. They all have two eyes, they all have a nose, they all have one mouth. Why is that similar? Did they evolve from the same kind of an organism? And why are they different? Maybe they're different because they've adapted to life in these different biomes. So these are just some of the interesting questions that we could take a look at in biology using the same movie as we used in the other disciplines. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle would be, how do we use Star Wars to take a closer look at math? Hi, everyone. I'm Mrs. Barco. Um, I teach Honors Algebra II, which is what you would be taking next year. Um, so I'm going to relate the Star Wars now to mathematics. So up on the screen, we have some blueprints of the Death Star and some spaceships and cruisers from the movie. Um, so in Honors Algebra II or in geometry, what we might do is 
um, look at some scale drawings and look at proportions and ratios of uh, the different objects from Star Wars. Um, we might take a map of the galaxy and calculate different distances traveled by the, star, by the spaceships and by the cruisers. Um, we might take the middle picture, for example, and draw that into triangles and look at the angles of the triangles and the length of the sides, um, or calculate the actual volume of how big the Death Star is. Um, so there's a lot of different ways we can take Star Wars and turn it and look at it in mathematics. Um, I'm a fairly new Star Wars fan. Anybody else never seen Star Wars before? May be confused by some of the things we're talking about. Um, so we actually can relate this to other things as well. Not just Star Wars, but we're also gonna look at bottle flipping, for example. And we're gonna take all four of our subjects and also relate it to bottle flipping for you. Um, so in mathematics, we can relate easily to bottle flipping. For example, if Mr. Moses flipped the bottle 10 times, what's the experimental probability that he's going to land it? He would probably say 10 out of 10. I would probably say one out of 10. Um, and that's one way we could relate it to math. Another way is we could actually look at the path the bottle takes. So if we look at us throwing the bottle, it actually makes a U shape, which we call a parabola. Um, and we could look at that on a graph as a quadratic. And we could look at the maximum height. How high did the bottle go? And where did the bottle start? And where did it stop? And that would be our x-intercepts on our graph. Um, and that's something we will do next year in Honors Algebra 2. So um, with that, I'm going to send it back to Mr. Babick, and he's going to explain a little bit how it relates to science. OK, bottle flipping has everything to do with science. And a lot of it is physics. But in biology, we could talk about two basic things. We could talk about the properties of water, which enable the bottle flip to occur. And then we could also use it to test the scientific method. How is the, what is the best method to flip the bottle? And let's see if, I'm not that good at this, but see, I'm not that good. But anyways, um, as far as the properties of water are concerned, there's a couple things that lend itself to bottle flipping. One, water is, po is polar, and that means that water will stick to surfaces. It, that's called adhesion. So it tends to stick to the sides of the bottle. The other thing that it tends to do is it's cohesive. And, and that's why water forms puddles. But the water will stick together in a mass. And that center of mass is what you're trying to flip when you do your bottle flipping. So that's going to affect it very much. The other thing that we could do with bottle flipping is just use it to be an example of the scientific method. There is a good way of doing this. There is a certain level that's best. There is a certain height involved. There is a certain number of flips. And we could test those different variables and come to a conclusion if we test it using the scientific method. And the scientific method is the way in which we find any kind of knowledge. Okay. So from there, we're going to talk about social studies. Okay, now, for civics government, you probably are thinking there's no way that you're going to be able to link anything dealing with bottle flipping or water to it. But actually you can because, as we know in our society today, uh, all around the country, they are, schools are banning bottle flipping before safety concerns because people can get hit by the bottle. Okay, is it banned here in school? Is there a ban on it here? People are saying yes. Okay, now, that's where government comes into play. This is where your civic duty comes into play because what you can do is through civics and government, we can learn how do we go about to reform our society. And so that's where there can be a student-led uh, reform movement in changing what you don't like about uh, your environment. And so in this way, we can do, two different ways. I mean, one, you could rebel and do it, but you have to prepare for the punishment for that. Or we can do more civil action and actually start a petition and learn how petitions can help your society. And so that petition is a way for people to get together and to reform the society that you would like to do, which leads into what English can do with that petition. Right, so once you uh, decide that you want to have some sort of reform and, and maybe a petition, the idea is, of course, to put it together. Now, you can't just say, hey, we want to do this. Is that going to work? 
probably not. Uh, you have to use the art of persuasion, and that's obviously something that we would be able to look at uh, in English class. You know, what, what's the best way of composing a persuasive argument? You know, one of the first things you might want to do is think, all right, who's the audience here? Who are you trying to persuade? You know, it might be your principal, right? Probably most importantly, your principal, maybe other teachers. Uh, so you have to consider that, and then you can go about uh, forming your argument. Think about, you know, starting with some sort of attention grabber. What's most likely to get uh, your principal's attention in the right way. Um, the tone and voice that you would use. Obviously, you, you wouldn't talk to uh, your principal, your teachers, probably the same way you would talk to your friends or other people. So uh, we could look at that. Uh, and then also the uh, examples and the evidence you would use, you know, figuring out what are the best examples, what's the best uh, way of explaining why you think uh, that's important. And that's all something that then we could look at, like I said, in. Uh, the English class. So that's kind of an example of how even something as uh, random or um, you know, seemingly small as bottle flipping uh, could be something that we could also look at in all four classes um, next year. Our main goal here today was to show you how we could take interesting relevant topics and teach them across the four major subjects that you're going to take next year. So the team of teachers that presented to you here will be the ones actually doing that. But right now I'm going to introduce Mr. Aquilio, which is our high school principal, and he's going to talk to you guys a little further about this. Thanks. How are you guys doing? Very quiet group. Well trained. All right, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the things they showed you this after this morning. Um, the overall concept of this Q program is basically to give you guys an opportunity to learn all of your math, science, social studies, and English, all four of those areas with teachers that are gonna share topics and content. They're not gonna change what they've been teaching in the past as far as the content and the topics that you need to learn before getting out of high school but they're gonna change the way they teach it, the timing of it. Um, it'll be a lot like you do here in middle school where you have some of the same teachers that teach you all four areas. You don't have that at high school. At high school, when you take a math class, you go to a math class. You may not have the same math teacher as seven or eight of your friends. Okay, you're kind of all over the place in high school. But with this Q program, any students that are taking four honors classes, which is hard to do, I will be honest when I say, in the past, we don't even really recommend taking all four unless you're an excellent student. But I think all of you here can and probably should try it because of the way it's gonna be taught, okay? Although it looks fun with the, the bottle flipping and the Star Wars, the topics you'll be going through to learn English, math, and those things, it's gonna be extremely challenging as well, okay? Because they are gonna be honors classes. All four of those classes that you just saw will be top level classes at the high school. So again, it'll be very challenging, but hopefully the way it's structured and the support you'll get, you'll be very successful with the way you learn it and actually get a, a deeper understanding of some of those content areas, okay? So when you go through the scheduling process with your counselor and you're taking a look at different courses you wanna take, there will be different options for social studies and science and math um, and English. But if you do take all four of the honors level classes, you will be automatically kind of in our pilot program, which is doing this. And this is the first time we've done this at the high school. So it is gonna look a little bit different. Um, and as we move forward with it, if you're strong in math and you're weak in English, you may sp spend a little bit more time in English than you do in math within those four, both those four periods, okay? So again, I don't wanna scare you. It's gonna be, it's gonna be challenging, but you guys are, are all smart guy, kids and you're gonna, you're gonna be doing fine with that. Okay, so all four honors classes, you'll be grouped together, kind of like in a team. You may not have the same uh, period as some of your friends in that group, but you will have those four teachers that you just saw today teaching in those areas, okay? There's other math teachers in the high school, and even if you don't take um, all four classes, you can still take one honors class, two honors class, three honors classes, and still have those honors level classes, but this is something kind of unique that we're gonna try this year, and hopefully it works, and in the future, no, all students can have a chance to do that, okay? Do you guys have any questions for any of the teachers or Mr. McCracken or Ms. Stewart? Questions about how it's being taught, how it's scheduled, anything like that? I just have one thing to add that might help with that. You were chosen to be here today because you either have Algebra 1 or Geometry right now, so therefore you can take Honors Algebra 2 next year. 
The sequence of courses is usually geometry and then algebra two, but if you wanna be part of this and you wanna do this cross-curricular thing, we'll put you into the honors algebra two so that you can do this. And then getting the geometry, we'll either get that for your 10th grade year. You could always double up next year if you wanna do it that way, that's up to you. But we don't want you to not have this opportunity. All you have to have is algebra one in order to do this. So everybody in this room right now will complete algebra one by the end of this year. And then next year, you will go into honors algebra two and then those that haven't had honors geometry yet, we'd figure that out for you and, and decide whether you get that your 10th grade year or you could do two math classes next year if it fits in your schedule, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but all the other courses then you'd have to sign up for would be honors then too, the other three. Okay, so that's why you were chosen to be here. You have to have at least algebra one in order to do it. Okay, what kind of questions or thoughts you guys have? Any comments? Exciting? Something you good, think you might want to try? Hate Star Wars, you want to look at something different? <laughs> yeah, they came up with two samples that they thought would be something that would be similar to what you'd learn. Okay, so there'll be many of different uh, English topics that come up that go across the curriculum, but it'll be nice because the things that you do in one class, you'll be doing in the other class, and all four of them, there'll be a lot of projects and things you'll be working on that you'll constantly be talking about the same type of thing. So it won't be like you have to turn something on and off every time you go to a new class and try to figure out, you know, how does that relate to what I'm doing? There's gonna be a lot of relations that'll be between all four, sometimes three of the subjects, sometimes two of them. They're working really hard at trying to mesh all that together to show you how all those, those um, subjects fit together. And we're hoping at some point throughout the year too to also bring in your electives too. How does art fit in and music and the other courses that you take can some of you go off and be an expert and work on that and bring it back to the group? So you don't all have to be in the same electives too in order to do this, but these four classes will be meshed together for you. So they make more sense. So they're kind of like that. So if the, this pilot program is successful, I think what we're doing is this book might get better educational career that you might want. We're hoping this continues. If, it, if it's a success, success which again, we, we probably think it will be, um, then once you get into 10th grade, there'll be an option for you to continue with that. So you'll still have some math, science, social studies, and English cl classes together as a team. As you get older, junior, senior, it'll all depend on your future and what you want to do in college and as a career, because there's so many electives at the high school, you can really focus on what you want to do in your future. So that's three, four years down the road. Um, hopefully, hopefully by the time you get there, we will have this in place where you're really, your teachers are sharing ideas throughout your, your day. So whether you're in a math class, an art class, um, even a phys ed class, there's some kind of link between that content where what you're learning in one class will kind of feed off of another class and try to share that as much as possible. Yeah, we even talked with the World Language Department about taking languages, so it wouldn't matter what language you would take. We could have a Spanish part coming back, a German part, a French part, so that we could tie all that into it too. So as it goes and as, as you grow and go throughout, we're hoping to continue it and do all this with you. And then in addition, try to expand it for all of the ninth graders coming in maybe the following year. But it, you know, it takes a while to get it all organized. We have to start with a smaller group this year, which hopefully that'll be you guys. And it's special because it's, it's, you, you guys are the first ones, okay? You're the first ones that are gonna be trying to do this, so we need you, okay? Because you guys are, are, are strong, strong students and, and without, for it to be a success, we need, we need you guys. So hopefully it works for you guys. Um, and if it does, then we're going to continue with it. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thanks. I'll we want to thank you for coming to visit with us and presenting this to us. The job well done. And uh, hopefully you uh, guys consider this and consider it as a, a viable option. <coughs> I'm going to tell them about the eighth grade scheduling night so they know the next part. Yeah, of there will be a, a scheduling on January 26th. Six, yeah. you will, your parents will get some information, um, and you guys will be invited to the high school to hear another presentation on, on how things are uh, scheduled. But when you come to that, we will also have an opportunity for your parents to see some of this presentation as well. Um, so when you go home, tell your parents about it. Again, it's called the Q program, CUE. Um, We'll have different classes and venues at the high school, but this will be one of the, the areas they can go to to visit um, to see more information about it. 
Okay. And then the idea was to have this videoed so that way if you can't make that or your parents can't make that and you're trying to explain to them what it is and you're trying to make sure they understand it, this, what we talked about here today, will be available for them. So once that's up, we'll let your teachers know and they can let you know that you can click on the website and find it so that way we're trying to explain to them, here's what I'd like to do at school next year, here's what I'd like to schedule, you can explain it to them a little bit more so you can give them more details about it so you don't have to remember every single thing you saw today and try to explain it and get them to understand it. So. Okay? Thanks, guys. Yep, thanks for coming. <laughs>